When you picture the wonders of Peru, you might think of things like the Nazca Lines, Machu Picchu or Paddington Bear. But on the Pacific side of the Andes Mountains is a place far more ancient with an astonishing story to tell. The Okukahi Desert. An almost Martian looking landscape of rocky hills and sprawling badlands. Despite its current aridity, these sands hold clues to a lush history. The desert itself is the exposed, eroded surface of the Pisco Basin a two kilometre thick sedimentary sequence that began in the early Cenozoic era about 50 million years ago, not long after the extinction of the dinosaurs. This was once a big dip in the ocean floor created by drifting tectonic plates. The oceanic Nazca plate is moving slowly eastwards, causing it to subduct under the continental South American plate and creating an underwater depression. Over the last 50 million years, the basin has been gradually filling up with sediments, creating a record of its history. Thanks to sitting in the shadow of active volcanoes, there are layers of ash in the desert which have allowed the site to be radiometrically dated and providing a robust timeline of the area's geological and biological evolution. The Okukahe might look barren now, but the bones of the creatures that once lived here are scattered across its surface, and they're far from what you'd expect in a desert. Sharks, crocodiles, turtles, seabirds, sea lions, whales, and even a marine sloth. How did such incredible biodiversity arise in this now arid landscape? One factor aiding this bloom of life is the Humboldt Current, a deep sea circulation which travels north from Antarctica along the western coast. This current draws nutrients from the deep ocean up towards the surface and causes the surrounding waters to be a lot cooler than they otherwise would be. Western South America almost never experiences tropical storms because there's not enough energy coming off the ocean surface to power those weather systems. The combination of mild weather, nutrient rich waters and long daylight hours that come with being in the tropics provided the ideal conditions for seagrass and kelp as well as arguably one of the most important groups of organisms on the planet, diatoms. Single-celled algae with a cell wall made of silica. These photosynthetic jewels might be tiny, but their influence on the world is enormous. They make up almost half of the ocean's biomass and produce up to half of the world's oxygen, making them fundamental to marine food chains and earth systems as a whole. They also happen to prefer cool water to warm water, which, side note, is not great news if climate change carries on its current projections, but it means they could absolutely thrive in the waters of the Pisco Basin. So much so that their silica cells have become part of the geology itself. Amongst the sandstones, siltstones and volcanic ash of the Okukahi are outcrops of a rock called diatomite, which is almost pure fossilised diatoms. The very sand of the desert itself was was once alive. The wealth of algae and marine plants in the Pisco laid the foundations for a rich and dynamic ecosystem. Over the course of its 50 million year history, the Pisco was home to such creatures as Pelagornis, a saw-billed seabird with the widest wings of any known bird, megatoothed sharks, including the notorious Megalodon, the spear-billed penguin Icodiptes, dozens of species of whale and dolphin, including the monstrous Liviatan, the odd-tusked Odobinocetops, and Pyrocetus, an ancient whale of surprising but uncertain hugeness. The most peculiar of all, though, had to be Thalassochnus, a ground sloth adapted to grazing on seagrass in the choppy waters. Over the last few million years, a combination of uplift from the rising Andean mountains and sea level decline from the onset of the Ice Age dragged the basin away from the shoreline, producing the modern Okakahe Desert and leaving behind an incredible legacy. A geological treasure trove of biological sands and landlocked marine life. New discoveries are coming out of the Okakahe all the time, which is why it's somewhat concerning that the desert is now under threat. Peru has a housing crisis. Around 20 to 30 percent of its population live below the poverty line, driving crime, unrest, and crucially, homelessness. New housing developments are often far too expensive for the average Peruvian family, forcing many to build their own homes and leading to the expansion of makeshift settlements. This means that not only are areas of natural and cultural importance being built upon without any official planning or impact assessment, but the houses themselves are barely fit for habitation. Lacking access to key amenities and unable to withstand the earthquakes that affect this still active subduction zone. There are calls for the Okakahe to be designated a national park to protect it from these informal settlements, and there is work being done by a number of charities and foundations to give Peruvian house hunters the tools and support they need to have livable homes and provide funding for quality, affordable developments. I'll stick some links in the description of this video so you can check them out and maybe support them if you can. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about the Pisco Basin's fossils or the Peruvian housing crisis, there are links to resources in the description. Big thank you to my supporters on Patreon who keep me going, especially my top tier supporters who get a personal shout out. That's Brody, Carl Zuri Lou, and Isaiah Coltari. See you later.